Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Follow the Leader. And our scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 31. When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, I'm now 120 years old, and I'm no longer able to lead you. The Lord has told me, you will not cross the Jordan River. But the Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will lead you across the river, just as the Lord promised. The Lord will destroy the nations living in the land, just as he destroyed Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites. The Lord will hand over to you the people who live there, and you must deal with them as I have commanded you. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Then Moses called for Joshua, and as all Israel watched, he said to him, Be strong and courageous, for you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors he would give them. You are the one who will divide it among them as their grants of land. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Follow the leader is a game we all played as children. For Moses and Joshua, it was no game. The passing of the baton of leadership for the nation of Israel was as serious as it gets. Moses had been the only leader of the nation of released slaves in the wilderness for 40 years. His leadership was an awesome image of dependency on Yahweh, and it was now being passed along to Joshua, who would lead the people across the Jordan River to their new home, the land of promise. In observing how Moses passed that baton of leadership to Joshua, we notice Moses made it a clear and unalterable moment. It was ceremonial, done in the presence of the entire nation, but the language he used was clear enough so there could be no mistaking that there was a new pastor of the flock. I've seen the effects of leaders who couldn't bear to do that. In my tribe, the Methodists, there's an expectation that when your appointment as pastor ends, you leave. You leave the position and you leave leadership in the hands of the next person. You don't seek to continue pastoral leadership. You may accept friendship, but critiquing the next leader or continually showing up muddles perception of who is leading, and that cripples ministry. When pastors or members who have left the church to become part of another church family hang on to the past, it's a hindrance to the group they deemed to leave. Living in the past is a hindrance to the present and the health of the future. Moses did not go with the people across Jordan. Had he done that, we never would have seen Joshua's name written in Scripture. Moses also made it clear in handing the baton to Joshua that God was the ultimate leader. He reminded Joshua and everyone listening on that day that it was God who would go before the people into the land. Joshua, the under-shepherd, would be following the good shepherd. Joshua did well to accept that leadership and faithfully lead. Moses also did well in obeying God's direction to pass the baton. His job was done. The people also did well to accept the new leader. For you today, someday the pastor of your church will leave. Someday a dear friend, or not so dear, may leave. It may be the right or wrong time, or in your opinion, for the wrong reason. It is always appropriate to grieve the loss and remember the ways God has used a leader in your life. But the best course of action is not to sit down like a mule refusing to go forward. Moses went to his reward with God. Joshua picked up the baton and moved out. God's people follow the leader. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.